Right then guys, hello and welcome to the new IGTV series. So this series is called Supplement Science. So basically what I'm going to do week on week as I did with the anatomy videos, um, I'm basically just going to explain different um, supplements and their importance, basically covering what they are, why to use them, um, when to use them and how you can implement them. Um, so first episode is going to be on stimulant pre-workouts so i have a stimulant pre-workout here which is stim junkie um, from cmp so i'll be relating a lot of this to what is in stim junkie and i'm going to be doing that throughout the whole series um, so like i say just as an introduction that's how it's all going to work obviously if any of you have any questions at all on anything that i've covered um, or if you have any suggestions of a supplement that you want me to cover then please just ask in the comments. Uh, but we'll get into today's video. So first episode, stimulant, stimulant pre-workouts. So what are they? Um, so basically a stimulant pre-workout means a pre-workout that is containing caffeine. So the stimulant part is, is the caffeine. So there's also non-stimulant or non-stim pre-workouts, which are pump products, which is going to be the next episode. So that'll be next week's video. So what is in them? Primary compounds that are in them. We've got caffeine, we've got beta alanine, and we've got L-theanine. There's a hell of a lot of other things in there. I'm not going to make these videos too complicated. I don't want to. Very similar to the uh, anatomy videos, I could have gone into a lot more detail with them, but I want this to be able to reach a wider audience, and I don't want it just to be me rambling names of compounds at you that you don't understand or that I can't even pronounce. Um, so I'm going to focus on the main things in each supplement and the, the primary focus of each supplement. So we've got caffeine, we've got beta alanine and we've got L-theanine. Um, in terms of why you would take a stimulant pre-workout. So first of all, the caffeine that's in there, what does that do? So it's basically a, a nootropic. So what that means is that it what it does is it stimulates the brain through antagonizing adenosine um, hormones. Okay, so you have a hormone in the brain called adenosine, uh, and basically what that does is it calms us down, it relaxes us. We need that, of course we need that. Um, but when we're in a position where we're going to train, we don't really want that. We want to be in an alert position. We want to be at sort of top level of cognition where everything we can focus on an exercise, we can focus on getting a mind muscle connection, we're psyched up in the gym, we're motivated to go in and beat our numbers. So what caffeine does is it antagonizes those adenosine hormones so it kind of stops us from being in that relaxed state. So that's the first thing. With that, caffeine also can increase anaerobic capacity, um, power output, uh, oxygen uptake, um, heart rate, blood flow. Uh, metabolic rate, all of these things can be um, basically a product of what caffeine can do. So it's definitely worth having pre-workout. Um, in terms of the other two compounds, so beta alanine, it helps with increasing muscular endurance. Um, one thing you'll notice with beta alanine is you'll get something called paresthesia. And what this is, is that tingling feeling that you get sometimes when you have a pre-workout, that's through the beta alanine. It's harmless, completely harmless. It has no benefit in terms of your training other than the placebo effect of you feel like you've taken that pre-workout and you can feel that tingling feeling. Um, and then we've got L-theanine. So the, the function of L-theanine is actually re relaxation, which is counterproductive to the caffeine, but that's kind of the point. It negates the effects a little bit and almost takes the edge off the caffeine slightly so that you're not getting, you know, let's say, overly aroused when it comes to training because you know, over-arousal isn't going to be a positive effect. So the L-theanine almost takes off the edge of the caffeine to an extent, um, which you could argue you don't need, um, but dependent on people's tolerance and caffeine, it's generally quite beneficial to have that in there so that you're not sort of over-consuming caffeine and potentially getting too aroused, too stressed, too anxious before training or during training. So when to take it? Um, obviously pre-workouts in the name, so take it prior to training. Uh, five to 30 minutes, I would suggest, is a, is a good point. For me, it's always the, the, the closer to training, the better. I feel like it hits me straight away. But for some people, it might take a little bit longer for it to, to take its toll and actually you know, feel the effect of it. But that's, again, very individualistic. Find what works for you. Five, five minutes, 30 minutes, anywhere within there. Um, definitely take it before three o'clock. So I sort of give my, my clients a, a caffeine curfew of 3 p.m., um, and that's just due to the fact that the half-life of caffeine is four to six hours. So basically what that means is if you were to have caffeine at, let's say, 5 p.m. at night, if you were to ingest 400 milligrams of caffeine, 
that would mean that even at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, you've still got at least 200 milligrams of caffeine, um, so half of that dose in your system. Uh, a lot of people will argue, oh, it doesn't affect my sleep at all. You might not feel that. It's very similar to you don't feel that alcohol affects your sleep. You, you, know, you have alcohol, you end up falling asleep like that. But in terms of the actual sleep quality that you're getting, that's taking a big hit. So I would suggest that you give yourself like 3 p.m. as like the, the, the last time in the day that you can have this caffeine. And, but if you're going to train after that, then I'd recommend a pump product, which again, like I said, will be next week's episode. So how to take it? This is very individualistic in terms of the dosage. So studies really kind of show that to around 200 milligrams, between like 100 and 200 milligrams around there, has like a fat burning effect. So basically it increases heart rate, it's gonna make you move a little bit more. That's why all these fat burners are generally just caffeine. Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're gonna buy a fat burner, you might as well just buy caffeine and hydrous, which is caffeine in its purest form. That's generally all it is. It's just gonna help you move a bit more, potentially increase heart rate a little bit and, and get you moving and increase that metabolic rate slightly. Um, but dosages of like 500 milligrams plus around there, um, have been shown to to provide strength increases. Um, so, is it worth taking that amount? Potentially, if, if if you can manage that dose, then potentially it is worth taking that amount. But for a lot of people, that will be a really high dose, which could have a more of a negative impact in terms of increasing stress and increasing anxiety. So again, it's trying to find that perfect balance for you. Um, so you'll know, like, if you've taken two scoops of something before and it's hit you like a train and you feel horrendous it's probably not worth taking that amount. So it might not be that you get the strength um, increases from the pre-workout, but you're still getting that cognitive benefit and that sort of increase in heart rate, blood flow, metabolic rate. So in terms of like a sort of rough guide, anywhere between four to six milligrams per kilogram of body weight is a good idea. Definitely start lower than that if you're new to taking caffeine or if you know that you are really sensitive to caffeine. So you could even go as low as two milligrams per kilogram of body weight to start off with. Uh, in terms of better alanine, um, it's shown two to five grams per day is a good dose. Um, interestingly, you don't actually have to take it as a pre-workout. The timing is almost irrelevant when it comes to better alanine, um, even though you do get that tingling feeling. Uh, in, in my opinion, you wouldn't really want that any other time of the day because you associate that to training and that, that, that placebo of, of feeling, oh my God, I'm, I'm tingling now, I'm gonna go and train. So. I would definitely take it in your pre. If it's not already in there, then you can supplement it in there or you can get a pre-workout that has got it in. Um, two to five grams. So I'll go over L-theanine and I'll cover exactly the, the dosage in the, the Stim Junkie. So L-theanine, it's around sort of 100 to 200 milligrams that you want in to take and you want to take that with caffeine as well. Obviously we spoke about it sort of negating that effect of caffeine and reducing the chance of almost going sort of too stressed and too aroused. So. In the Stim Junkie, you've got 250 milligrams of caffeine per scoop. So one scoop would probably be sound for most people. If you're really sensitive, then like half a scoop. If you really fancy going for it, then two scoops. But again, that's that 500 milligram of caffeine. So you're likely gonna get that impact of, of strength increases there. But can you manage that amount of caffeine in terms of the cognitive effects and, and how it's gonna make you feel? Um, so yeah, it's again, it's weighing that up. Um, in terms of the better alanine, it's got 3,200 milligrams per scoop. So that sort of gets you nicely within that two to five grams of better alanine. And then you've got L-theanine, 400 milligrams. So it's actually a little bit higher than the, um, the recommended dose. But I suggest that's because there's a lot of other compounds in there and because the caffeine content is high compared to most pre-workouts. 250 milligrams in eight grams, that's what one scoop is, is quite a lot. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of other compounds in there, uh, but I'm not going to overcomplicate this video too much. I don't want this series to become me blabbing long words at people. So that's pretty much everything. I've got some tips here as well, which I'll have in every episode. So the first one being be aware of what pre-workout you're taking if you are competing in a tested federation. So um, quite a lot of them have um, substances in that can come up as a banned substance. So they're prohibited in competition. They're not prohibited outside of competition. So generally you just need to take it out of your, like you don't, you need to make sure you're not having it like two weeks prior to, to competing. But there are some that do have uh, compounds in that are prohibited at all times. And if you're taking that, you can actually be banned for like two years. Um, so it's worth checking on the um, WADA um, prohibited list to make sure that what you're having isn't on the list of, of prohibited um, compounds. I would definitely recommend cycling off it. So this is to aid um, in terms of the 
effects that it's giving you. So if you're really, really sensitive to, to caffeine, the more and more you take it, the, the less sensitive you're going to be and you're almost diminishing the, the return that you're getting from it. So I recommend cycling off it and, and something like every time you have a deload would be perfect. Maybe once every couple of months or six weeks or so, have a week off it and that will generally keep your sort of um, sensitivity to it a little bit lower and you won't get to the point where you have to take stupidly high amounts. Um, and it, over time, no matter how much you keep taking it, it will just get, you know, your tolerance will just become greater and greater and greater. So you're just not getting the effect of it. Um, so yeah, the placebo effect is great, but you probably don't need to have a caffeine steam if you just like the placebo effect of, of taking something. You could definitely have a pump product instead to reduce your amount of caffeine that you're taking. Um, in terms of like the time constraints, that's um, covering the, the 3 p.m. curfew. Just be aware of that. Um, to make sure that you're not impacting your sleep in a negative way. The flavour is really important. Obviously, you know, you want it to taste nice. Um, this is very, very good. It's Rainbow Nerds. I know it's the only flavour they've brought out. But I do know they have got some coming out soon, so definitely have a look out for that. Uh, in terms of price-wise, like, realistically, anywhere between 20 to £30 pounds is, is realistic. You can get some for less than that, which generally just aren't going to be great. They're not going to have... Kind of what you want in it to do what we want and then anything more expensive than that is it is generally going to be a good product but it might be a little bit excessive on the price side uh, i'm pretty sure the stim junkie um is around like 20 pounds especially if you use uh, use my code um so yeah that's everything covered so any questions on anything i've spoke about please just ask so that is stimulant pre-workouts episode one done episode two next week will be on non-stim pre-workouts or pump products so stay tuned for that one cheers guys